Hey guys, this is David. I want to share with you a Bible moment. This comes from John chapter 20. This is the story of Thomas after the crucifixion. So John 20 verse 24. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were in sight again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Good old doubting Thomas gets a bad rap. But I want to say, Thomas gives us two lessons I want to share with us today that are actually very encouraging. And the two points are Thomas knew what he needed, and Thomas showed up where God was likely to show up at. So the first one is Thomas knew what he needed. What I appreciate about Thomas is this is a man, let's, let's bring this, let's get real with this. Let's bring this down to very relatable terms. This is a man, this is a group of men and women who have been shattered by hope. They saw Jesus as the Messiah and they've been scratching their heads because this has not been at all like they've been thinking, but they're like, okay, you know, he's, he's the Messiah. And then he's crucified and he dies. Think of a time when you had someone who was very close to you. This is a good friend, and they stabbed you in the back. You felt betrayed by them, because you were. Maybe you were in a church, and these people who were supposed to be so God-loving and caring for you ended up turning a blind eye when you needed it most. Or they tore you down when you needed encouragement. To me, I think this is the situation Thomas is in, where he has been so wounded and so hurt, he's saying, I will not dare to hope that courageously again. And he knows what he needs, and I think that's what's so important about us, is he's honest with himself. He knows, I need this. And God answers it. He shows up. And so I think, first of all, we need to learn if we're having our doubts, if we're having resentment or bitterness, if we're dealing with some issue, we need to be honest with ourselves with where we're really at and come to God. Come to God with that issue and say, God, I am angry. I am frustrated. I am whatever. I need this. Now, that doesn't mean God's going to answer you with that exact request. He did in um, Thomas's situation. But the point is, when we come to God and we're willing to have this dialogue, even though it's frustrating and we don't understand and we want God to fix it now, come to him and he may answer, you know, I believe he will answer your request, but perhaps in a very different way than you didn't expect. I mean, look at Jesus himself. He was Emmanuel, God with us. He was the answer to so to humanity's problem, but it was nothing like these people I, were expecting. But the second thing I want to get to, though, is showing up where God's at, because we can ask God, you know, we can request, you know, God, I want you to do this, but if we're not showing up where he's at, we're going to possibly, very likely, miss what he's doing. What do I mean by that? It says, eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. He's spending time with the disciples, and he's with the disciples where they're at, and that is where Jesus shows up. 
So you and I have a responsibility that if we're asking God for something and if we're really serious about it and we're trying to pursue the Lord, we also have an obligation to go to the places where we where God is most likely to show up. And that means we need to be with his people. We need to be reading his word to be thinking like him and his thoughts. It means we need to be slowing down in our souls, in our hearts, in our minds to be willing to, to let God interrupt us for will be willing to see how God wants to speak to us to reflect on that because if we're not showing up in any one of those three areas it's going to take something like a road of Damascus for God to get our attention but that is not the Christian walk the Christian walk is about walking with God and his people we're all flawed and we're all broken but we're also being transformed day by day into who more into who God is but we can't do that if we're not being refined by one another. We can't do that if we're not understanding God's word and seeing the way he sees things, how he wants to deal with situations. And we can't do that if we're not reflecting on where is God working in my life? How do I need to be changing? What do I need to be repenting of? And how do I need to be confessing things in my life? Because I will easily slide back into my old behavior. And God knows that. And it's not a matter of me reaching some level of perfection. It's about having a relationship and proclaiming who God is. But we do that when we come before God and realizing that he's God and we're not. So that's my encouragement for us today. And I'll end with this. This comes from the book of James. It says, if anyone, asks, if anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask of God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he'll receive anything from the Lord. Thomas knew what he needed, and he believed enough to show up where he believed God was going to be at. And I don't know what your situation is, but if we're, we need to press into who God is, with the requests be honest with him be honest with yourself if you're having doubts if you're doubting god's existence if you're frustrated with god's timing on things bring that to him and tell him i need this and then start asking him how do you want to answer that and then we need to be spending time with his people and in his word and be silent in reflection and being willing to see how does he want to come and answer that question because it may be completely different than what you're anticipating and if you're not slowing down or if you're not being where god is at you will miss it can you imagine if thomas had not been there on that day he would have missed a second coming a second appearing of jesus he may not have gotten a third chance but he was faithful enough to show up where God's people were at. He was faithful enough to be there, and God showed up. So be encouraged, you guys. Thanks for listening.